Greetings gastronauts, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith, and today I'm going to do a long Christmassy thing. I'm going to do a long Yule Log. So a few months ago I was asked by Oxfam GB to help them promote their fair trade food products. And who am I to disagree? I uh, went along to my local Oxfam shop which is in the Leeds suburb of Headingley. So here we are again in the uh, cookware section. They, they have quite a good range, it's all second hand but um, there's some good stuff. You know the plates are in good condition, they're not chipped or anything. And I've been having a little rummage and spotted this monster fruit bowl for um, well three quid so, I'm having that. so it's Christmas and they've got loads of unusual ideas for the gift there's like handmade placemats pencil case and there's games books chocolate other kinds of sweeties and other food items and no Christmas is complete without a load of Oxfam Christmas cards these are really good and this I've already got one of these, it's from Swaziland, and uh, you've got hot mango chilli, you've got... Oh no, this is different, this is all jams, like uh, melon and ginger, mango, pineapple, and you get a very interesting handmade wooden spoon, which is uh, quite fun. That's fair trade, that'd be a great gift for somebody, $7.99. I spotted these actual chocolate coins and that's made by Divine and their chocolate is brilliant so you know chocolate coins are normally made of uh, some kind of cardboard but this is made of really tasty chocolate so uh, two quid might have that okay and here we are in the fair trade section this is what I really came to get so um, Divine cocoa powder and some lovely milk chocolate so that's my shopping <laughs> that's a very fancy till of that green <laughs> I do I like things like that uh, no I'll stick it in my own bag there you go all right 20 million pound now thank you very much da -da -da -da. Okay. marvelous thank you and I bought chocolate because I like chocolate and uh, and I cooked a recipe with it and they, and they liked it very much and so they've asked me to do another one for Christmas and I thought it's a while since I did something like the long egg you know so um, maybe I could do a long thing using that technique so I came up with the idea of doing a long yule log cooked in the plastic tube in the sous vide setup and um, yeah <laughs> I did make a prototype and it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. You'll see later what happened. <laughs> it wasn't good, so I'm reverting to the traditional method of making a Yule log. It's still pretty long, but um, yeah, it's delicious. Uh, it's a little bit involved, but well worth the effort, so let's do it. Right, before we start with the real one, let's have a look at the um, possibly disastrous long boiled sous vide version which I'm pretty sure hasn't worked because you know you can do a lot of things with sous vide or low temperature cooking but I don't think sponge cakes is one of them and uh, okay so that's the potato spacer yeah. <laughs> oh dear and this is the inner Teflon core uh, and that is um, <laughs> something horrible and well you know yeah so the spacer didn't work very well because the hole's not in the center and um, yeah the sponge yeah eh, no no really not happening sorry first thing to do is make a chocolate sponge and these are the ingredients I've got six eggs those need to be separated I've got 150 grams of soft brown sugar I've got 50 grams of cocoa quarter of a teaspoon of salt and a half teaspoon each of cinnamon and nutmeg to give it that Christmas flavor <laughs> the cocoa you can only use this divine fair trade from Ghana very very wonderful and makes feel good yes so let's split these eggs into their component parts there's a spot of building work going on next door that sounds like they're murdering a huge bee 
Anyway, oh, they've stopped. So we're splitting the eggs into whites and yolks and we're gonna beat the whites to soft peaks. So you need to be very careful not to get any contamination of egg yolk into the egg white. So use three bowls. And wasn't very smart, was it? I hate doing it like this, I didn't mean to do that. So we'll put the yolks in that one and the whites in the big one. Actually, before you start mixing anything, you wanna prepare your baking sheet. So I've got some greaseproof paper and I've got some butter. So I'm just gonna dab butter around the edges and the corners. And this is basically glue to hold the paper flat because you don't want it sort of wrinkling and creasing and you know, being not smooth. <laughs> Let it run up the edges, that's good. And press it into the corners as much as you can. And also you want to get your oven preheating to 160 degrees Celsius if it's a fan oven, a convection oven, or 180 if it isn't. Okay, set that aside. And now just whisk it egg whites uh, until you get soft peaks and you know, use an electric whisk or a stand mixer, or if you're very brave, do it by hand. So it'll take um, maybe four or five minutes to get to something like this stage. And the reason we do this before the other thing is that we don't need to clean the beaters because we're lazy. Get your egg yolks and just whiz those together, break them up and add the brown sugar, break up any lumps in it. You don't need to sift it really, but uh, you don't want big lumps of clumpy sugar. Okay, just whisk those, whisk, whisk those together. So that's moderately, well, that's quite nicely mixed. So just add the spices, half teaspoon of cinnamon. Mm -mm -mm. Sorry, that was nutmeg. <laughs> half teaspoon of cinnamon and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Just mix those in a bit. And now add the lovely cocoa. And I really should have used the big bowl for this. <laughs> Interesting fact though, isn't it? It's like molecular gastronomy. Right, now the tricky bit is to fold in the egg white without losing all the air. So just do a bit at a time and be gentle with it. Right, look at that. Big bowl full of fluffiness. Amazing. So just spread that out into your prepared tin and then just level it off with a spatula and pop that in the oven for 20, 30 minutes. Remember, all ovens are different. So I'll check it after 20 minutes and see how it's doing. Yeehaw. Okay, we've had uh, 20 minutes, so let's see what's cooking. <laughs> well, I reckon that's done. As you know, it springs back when you press it. It's really soft. Cool. Okay, this is the slightly tricky bit. We need to get the sponge out of the tin and roll it up and then let it cool while it's rolled up. And uh, the trick is for it to not crack during that process. So take a bit more greaseproof paper, parchment paper, sprinkle it with caster sugar, and then tip out the sponge. Ooh, I'm scared. And peel off the original paper. Okay, there's some bits of it stuck, but that's not the end of the world. And you want to score a line along the bottom edge and then roll it up mmm I can really taste the spices in that little bit I just sneakily had all right that needs to cool completely to well to like room temperature Okay, now we need to make a filling to go inside the chocolate roll. So there's a number of things you can use. I'm gonna make a buttercream icing. You could also use just simple whipped cream or like fudge or ganache or whatever, but I, I prefer something white so it, or creamy so it contrasts 
colour wise with um, the chocolate roll. So I've got 200 grams of icing sugar, confectioner's sugar, 100 grams of unsalted butter, um, a tablespoon or two of double cream, heavy cream, and a splash of vanilla essence. And I completely lied about the icing sugar, that is caster sugar, uh, which I've just whizzed up in the blender a bit to make it finer, because I don't actually have any icing sugar. <laughs> uh, right, so the butter needs to be softened. This has been sitting on a radiator for half an hour. Um, so it should be quite easy to deal with, but it shouldn't be melted. This has actually started to melt a bit, but um, it would be okay. So just break that up with a fork or a whisk until it starts to become very soft and creamy. And now add the sugar and blend that in. Might be better off with a whisk now. And after a few minutes, it'll start to come together into a sort of ball of goodness. Well, into a ball of sweetness. <laughs> And so you can add some cream, or, or you can use milk. And a splash of vanilla. Ah. I need a refill. <laughs> and just keep on whisking till you get a nice, smooth, spreadable cream. Right, now the tricky part, possibly, is to um, spread it on the sponge. So get your sponge which is nice and cool now, and carefully unroll it and spread the filling evenly all over the inside. Okay, and just, you know, leave, leave a margin at the edge, bottom edge. And now just roll it up again. That's pretty cool, and nobody's gonna know about these, uh, that crack there. <laughs> so now we're gonna make some ganache to make a fake bark effect on the log. Right, now it's time to make the ganache, which is actually probably the easiest thing ever. You need the equal weights of double cream, heavy cream, and chocolate. I'm using milk chocolate. In fact, you know, divine milk chocolate from Ghana, and also some other stuff, because I didn't get enough of this. So I've got 250 grams of cream and 250 grams of chocolate. So what I need to do is dump the cream in the pan and heat that up until it's quite warm but not boiling. Okay, there's the hot cream and here's the chocolate broken up into little chunks. Just pop them all in there. Just leave that for uh, about a minute or so to let the chocolate warm up and start to melt. So when the chocolate chunks have melted, just stir it all together until you get a nice uniform colour. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. So let that cool down and then we can spread it on our log. I actually put the ganache in the freezer, so it's, um, it's possibly a bit firmer than I would have wanted it, but actually, oh, I don't know, I think that'd be fine. So let's assemble the Yule log. Traditionally, a Yule log will like have a branch sticking out of it, so we'll just, um, we'll just slice a bit off. Ooh, look at that, look at that spiral. That would win prizes on Bake Off, I think. <laughs> so we'll just stick it on the top because it stands a good chance of staying there. So I get a good load of ganache to use as glue for that. Basically butter the whole log in this fabulous ganache. And don't worry at all about trying to get it smooth and neat because it's meant to look like a log. So I completely overestimated the amount of ganache I would need, so there's, there's all this left. But worry not, that'll get used on something else. And um, all you need to do now is just drag a fork over it and kind of make ribs or striations in the ganache. Now, final finishing touch is to sift a bit of sugar, icing sugar if you have it, onto your log. How cool is that? Yay! And I'll stick that in the fridge so the ganache can firm up a bit. Then we can do a taste test. Okay, look at that. <laughs> the branch is falling off. <laughs> but never mind. Let's do a little taste test. Mmm. There's nothing wrong with that unless you don't like sugar and chocolate. <laughs> it's fantastic. 
And that's that. I hope you enjoyed it. Now please do the usual. Likes, shares, comments, subscriptions, donations, patronage, all that good stuff. Or just some of it. <laughs> and thank you for watching and see you next time.